Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to F6 online support program. This is week 10 and lesson 2. Textbook biology page 122 up to 125 unit 16 men and his environment and the topic is interaction in ecosystem. Objectives. So by the end of the lesson you will be able to explain different types of interactions in ecosystem and examples of different interactions. Interactions in ecosystem. We know that we have many kinds of the interactions among the living organism in our ecosystem. So the interaction in the ecosystem may be of two types, that is intraspecific and interspecific. Intraspecific is the interaction between the members of the same species. Intra mean within. So the interaction within the same species is known as intraspecific interaction while the inter mean between so the interaction between the members of the different species are called intra specific interaction some of the important interaction among living organism in ecosystem are given be so the first interaction is the competition so there is always a competition among the organisms of the ecosystem for the utilization of different types of resources that is the nutrient space etc even the plants also show the competition for the space, light, water, and the minerals. Always remember that the competition may be intraspecific or interspecific, but the intraspecific competition is always more stronger and more severe than the interspecific. This is because the species has more interaction uh, with their own species as compared to the other species. Competition always um, helps in maintaining a balance between the available resources and it also balances the number of individual of the species as it uh, keep a balance and a check between the number of the species. The second type of interaction is the predation. The predation can be defined as an interaction between two animals of the different species or between a plant and an animal. It means that the interaction the predation may be between uh, animals of different species and it can also be found in plants and animals. In predation, in the phenomena of predation, we have two organisms. The one is small and the other is large. The one is known as predator and the second is known as the prey. So the organism that attacks or kills the other animal is known as predator and the organism that is killed by the predator is known as the prey. So some of the examples of the predation are given below. Um, always remember that all the carnivore animals are predator. For example, frog prey upon mosquito. In this case, the frog is predator while the uh, mosquito is the prey. Fox preys upon the rabbit, so the fox is predator while the rabbit is the prey. In some other example, the predator is preyed upon by the some other predator. Like for example, if the frog is already a predator, but if it is preyed upon by the snake, so the frog become a prey and the snake become the predator. But if the snake, that is a second predator, is preyed upon by an eagle, so the eagle will be third predator, the snake will become then prey and the eagle become a predator. So it means that the predator may be preyed upon by the some other predators too. In this diagram, you see that in first picture, the frog preys upon the insect. But in the second diagram, you see that the snake preys upon the uh, on this frog. It means that the predator is preyed upon by the some other predator. As I told you that plant can also be act as a predator. So the example of these uh, plants are pitcher plant, sandew and venus fly trap, which are also known as carnivorous plants. These plants basically lives in an area where there is a mineral deficiency and other nutrients are also lacking. So they feed on some insects to fulfill their nitrogen requirement. 
these plants have developed a number of mechanisms to attract the insects. First, they secrete sweet nectar, which attracts the insects, and they have bright colors, which highly attract the insects and other animals. So, their leaves are also modified to capture the prey. They engulf the insects completely into their bodies and then by release of digestive enzymes, they completely digest that insects. So um, in this picture, you can see the uh, different carnivorous plants which are highly attractive and they are very much beautiful so the insects can easily attract and they can get their nutrients requirement. So the next interaction is the symbiosis. Symbiosis can be defined as the interaction as it is a relationship between members of different species in which they live together for a longer or shorter period of time. In simple words, the interaction in which the different species can live together either for a short or longer period of time. Symbiosis is of three types. That is parasitism, mutualism and commensalism. So first we will discuss parasitism in detail. This can be defined as a type of symbiosis in which a small partner derives food and shelter from the body of the large partner and in turn harms it. So in this phenomena we also have uh, two types of partners. The one is small known as a parasite and the second is large known as the host. So the parasite lives on the body of the host get its nourishment, shelter, and in turn harms it. We have two types of parasitism. The one is temporary parasitism and the second is uh, permanent parasitism. In temporary parasitism, the parasite spend most of it, uh, its life as independent free living, but uh, they spend only a part of its life cycle as a parasite or they complete their life cycle onto the body of the host. So they are known as the temporary, for example, leech, bed bugs, mosquito. They are the common temporary parasite which can only mm, complete their life cycle onto the host. In permanent parasitism, the parasite spend most of its life as the parasites. Uh, the examples are bacteria, some disease causing bacteria and viruses, they are the permanent parasites. Now the parasite can be classified as ectoparasite and the endoparasite. Ectoparasite are the parasites that live outside the body of the host. Like mosquitoes, leech, lice, etc. These are the examples of the ectoparasites. So the second type is endoparasite that live inside the body of the organism and get food and shelter. Examples include bacteria, viruses, stepworm, ascaris, antamoeba, plasmodium, etc. These are the examples of the endoparasites. Plants can also be um, a parasite on the other plant. These plants grow special type of fruits into the host body and sucks the required nutrients from the vascular tissues of the host. So plant can also be, can also act as a parasite on the other plant. The second type of uh, symbiosis is mutualism. It can be defined as a type of symbiotic interaction in which both the partners get benefit and neither is harm. For example, termite eat food but this termite is not able to digest this food so a protozoan live in the intestine of the termite which secrete cellulase enzyme to digest the cellulose of the wood for termite in return the termite provides food and shelter to this protozoan so in this case both the thermite and the uh, protozoan get benefited, no one is harmed. The second example is of nitrogen fixing bacteria which is rhizobium and it lives in the root nodules of the leguminous plants like pea, gram etc. 
so this bacteria directly fix the nitrogen the gaseous nitrogen into the nitrates for the plant and in turn the bacteria obtain food and shelter from this plant so these was some examples of the mutualism this picture showed the presence of protozoans in the gut of the termite and the second picture showed the bacteria in the root nodule the last type of uh, symbiosis is commensalism it can be defined as a type of symbiosis in which one partner is benefited while the other is neither benefited nor harm. Example is of the epiphytes and the sucker fish. Epiphytes are basically a small plants that is found on the uh, large plants for space only. They can absorb the water and the minerals from their atmosphere and they can prepare their own food. They are present on the large plant just to get space. The larger plants are neither benefited nor harmed in any way. The second example is of the sucker fish which is attached to the surface of some large fish that is sharp. The sucker fish has suckers so it can stick to the surface of the shark. In this way the shark provides easy transport to the sucker fish from one place to other or to the new feeding grounds. So these are the examples of the commensalism in which one partner is benefited while the other do not get any benefit or harm. The first picture shows the presence of the epiphytes on some large plant while the second shows the attachment of the sucker fish onto the um, body of the shark.